Hi there, my name is Michael, and uh, Fallout 4. This is one of the most divisive games in the Fallout franchise. There have been ones that people absolutely love, like Fallout New Vegas, blessed be its name. And there are ones that people absolutely hate, like Brotherhood of Steel, and that other one where you could play as a ghoul but not much else. That kind of destroyed the franchise in the early 2000s before it was resurrected. But Fallout 4 had unprecedented commercial success. People loved this game. They wanted nothing more than to play Fallout 4 at one point. It was the biggest thing for a few months right after it came out in 2015. However, it was also excoriated by quite a large number of longtime fans of the series, especially fans of Fallout New Vegas. It's not really hard to see why that is. It's not quite up to the same standards as Fallout New Vegas, or even 3, and especially 1 and 2. The quests are all, not all, but, you know, 80% of them or more are sort of radiant quests that mean nothing, and even the ones that actually try something seem to have a lower standard or quality. Just in general, when people talk, they don't sound like they're actual human beings saying something. You just sound like some sort of robot who's trying to get from one point of some sort of machine quest to another. There's no depth, there's no skillful writing, and yet... It was really fun to play for the most part, and I spent a lot of 2016 when I first got it playing it, you know, months and months, and I made a review about it, which I will post up here for you to check out. But Nuka World. I purchased the previous two expansions to this game, uh, Automatron and Far Harbor, and I thought that they were kind of, sort of, okay, I guess. I, I wasn't really seeing very much skill there in the design, uh, especially Automatron just added... I mean, it added roving raider gangs of, uh, of uh, that, that wandered around the Commonwealth waiting to attack you, but that should have been in the base game. And the final boss fight against the Mechanist is insanely difficult, even on... You know, even on a lesser difficulty, much less survival, where it's crazy, even in power armor. The Far Harbor DLC, I really ended up not liking, because it had a creepy New England-ish kind of fishing village vibe, and I don't think that really meshed well with Fallout. And It's kind of, you know, unless you're in sort of a southwestern desert, it's not quite, it doesn't feel very Fallout-ish. Even in the Capital Wasteland, which is of course on the east coast of the U.S., it felt like you were in a creepy desert-like landscape that was completely empty of life, except for occasional monsters. The mist-shrouded woods and hills of Far Harbor really didn't feel post-apocalyptic to me. It felt much more like a spooky H.P. Lovecraft sort of Dunwich horror or uh, Shadow over Innsmouth kind of feel. I loved it in the Call of Cthulhu game, that actually explicitly referenced that story and went into that, but it doesn't really work with Fallout. You know, after being burned twice, I didn't go back for Nuka World. I had sort of become sick of the game at the time. I'd been playing it for probably six months or so, and I just wanted to stop. I just kind of did my review of it and, and let the game go, and I, I stayed away from it for, you know, roughly a year or so, until very recently when I got the Nuka World DLC, and I thought it was amazing. The Nuka World DLC in some ways redeems a heck of a lot of Fallout 4 in my eyes. The game takes place in a separate area of the map like Far Harbor that you have to travel to from the Commonwealth, and when you get there, just right from the beginning, the atmosphere is incredible. This creepy, deserted parking lot right outside of Nuka World just looks beautiful. The decaying remains of the old world, and especially a kind of symbolism of the old consumerism that symbolized a lot of America, especially in the 
the chirpy 1950s. That's really where the heart and soul of the atmosphere of the Fallout games are. And if you actually go outside and wander around Nuka World, it looks like it's set in an actual wasteland. Most of the area in Fallout 4, it just looks too generic. It looks like it's a grassy field or a, a northeastern American forest. It doesn't look like a horrible, nightmarish desert. You know, the trees don't look as bright as they would, but it doesn't feel enough of a wasteland. I said in my review, it, it just looks like winter time. You know, it's not like, oh, this is a land of decay and emptiness and bleakness and destruction, but right away from that parking lot, you look in, it, it looks incredible in Nuka World. It, it's absolutely great. The style they finally nailed. It took them over, it took them almost a year after the game's initial release, but they finally got it. Nuka World is a pre-war amusement park meant to celebrate Nuka Cola, which has long been a staple of the series, and it's clearly a reference to Disney World or Disneyland, and it's been taken over by a number of raider gangs, three of them who are working together to control the place and use it as a base of operations to rob people and enslave people and try to control the trade in the area. When you arrive there, you have to go through this really fun section called the Gauntlet, which is this sort of nightmarish maze that the raiders have designed to trap people inside. And I also felt, you know, this was a fun reference to Escape from New York because there's a, a gladiatorial battle that you have to do with this giant guy just like Snake Plissken has to do against that huge bald Karnov looking guy in Escape from New York and that was it was really fun it, it was very dangerous I found out to my cost that I really should have come here in power armor even though I did not <laughs> that, that was a big mistake when you actually defeat the gauntlet you kill the overboss you become the overboss you take his place and suddenly you are allowed to control everything Everything and decide what you want to do. And you have to go through all of the areas of Nuka World, all of the little rides there. It's your job as the overboss to take over the rest of the park and clear it of the various monstrous creatures so the raiders can control everything in Nuka World instead of just the entrance. And of, of the five areas that you have to take over, really four of them I thought were amazing. There's Kitty Kingdom, which has this really cool story about this magnificent ghoul entertainer magician guy who's controlling all of the ghouls in the area and just wants to keep raiders out and you really end up hating him at first because he's nasty and mean and he tries to blow you up and irradiate you and kill you but you end up sympathizing with what he wants and what he believes and how and he, that he's really a good person that's just trying to fight these raiders and he has a loved one that he thinks is maybe going to cure his ghoulish condition it's really exciting and very well done and the design of the park is excellent. It is confusing, it is difficult to get your head around in each of the separate areas, and it's fun to explore all of these little worlds and dungeons and, and, and find your way around them with all the monsters. It's, it's very tough, but ultimately it's very fair, and with the right preparation you can have a great time in there. These were well designed to be confusing, and dangerous and really tax your abilities as a player. There's a sci-fi world called the Galactic Zone and the, the robots in there are really, really tough and you have to gradually and slowly take over the area and shut down all of the robots and eventually reclaim the land. They're, my favorite area is Safari World because you find a guy named Sito and Sito is a Tarzan-like figure who was actually raised by gorillas and you actually get to go to the ape house and see his gorillas and their zombie gorillas called ghoulrillas. I mean, anything with ghoulrillas in it automatically rockets it to one of the best quests ever in any Fallout game. I love this section. You can actually convince him to let one of the gorillas come with you, one of the zombie gorillas to come with you and fight monsters with you. That's the coolest thing ever in the world, and I love it. And, you know, that whole quest was incredible. I, you know, I love Tarzan. I love Conan. I went in there with my Grognak the Barbarian build, and it was, oh, it was incredible. I loved every second of it. There is a Wild West world, which admittedly is one of the weaker areas in terms of the enemies, because they go to this big length to try to show these creatures called bloodworms and try to make them seem scary. But you can't do that game. You can't 
uh, you realize that you have a crummy, bad enemy, which they are. They're really simple and easy to kill. They're super squishy, they have no damage resistance, and you can take them out really fast. And yet they try to build them up as being these terrifying monstrosities. There's a lot of references to Tremors, cult classic 1989 Kevin Bacon horror movie with the Graboids. However, they should have been like Graboids and giant monsters, not these tiny little scrawny worm things. Maybe the only area I didn't like that much is the bottling plant where you fight a ton of Meyer Lurks, one of my least favorite enemies, including Meyer, a giant Meyer Lurk queen, and it's just not a very exciting looking world. Yeah, I, I wasn't crazy about that, but four out of five ain't bad, including one of my favorite ones ever with Sito and the gorillas. That was incredible. Uh, you also get to gradually learn about all of the different raider gangs that are there. There's the pack that are like animalistic wild men. There's the operators who are a little like Benny from uh, Fallout New Vegas and that they're sort of a bit effete and uh, they care about their appearance and money more than violence. And then there are the disciples who are total psychopaths who are really just into the raiding to be murderers. And you eventually have to assign the gang's separate areas of the map, which is a lot of fun and figuring out which ones you like and which ones you don't like and which ones you want to give stuff to. The gangs are all well designed and they look cool and they put a lot of thought into them and I, I really, really liked it. And everything about this just felt like Fallout. It felt like, you know, wandering through the ruins of a, you know, an alternate world Disneyland. This is what Fallout is about. You can get the creepy sensation of the pre-war almost manic happiness of the 1950s with all of the lurking dread of nuclear annihilation and the creepy darkness of what the government is doing. A really fun quest involving the founder of Nuka-Cola, uh, John Bradburton, I think his name was, and there's a wonderful reference to a sleazy 1950s horror movie called The Brain That Wouldn't Die, and I loved how they slipped that in there. That was really nice. And there's also a hilarious quest involving the Habologists, which, as far as I remember, I don't think they were referenced at all since Fallout 2. I don't know if they were in Fallout 3, and I don't remember anything about them being in New Vegas. This uh, religious cult that was founded by Dick Hub, someone it sounds, and acts a lot like uh, L. Ron Hubbard, and it's, it's really just a lot of fun, and it's really enjoyable to play that. Um, I, I think they should have done more with the Habologists. They were hilarious. And there's also a haunted house ride, which is actually genuinely kind of scary because it, the, the game implies that it's actually haunted at one point. And the world of Nuka World is, it's much bigger than the actual attractions. There are a lot more areas to explore. There's a large map around it. There are some new monsters and enemies, but for the most part, they're, you know, a couple of insect creatures. They're these the painfully unfair and ridiculous flying ant swarms, which are not quite Cassadors, but they're definitely on the way towards being as annoying and horrible as Cassadors. They are really, really obnoxious enemies that I can't stand. Eventually, you know from the beginning that you're going to have to take over Nuka World and get it up and running again, and after a while, when you take over all of the parks, you will eventually be able to send people out into the world and go out and help the raiders attack settlements, which is another thing that really feels like it should have been in the base game. This was a hefty criticism that people leveled against the original game, and they were right to do so, because that should have been in the original freaking game. It's so fun to be the bad guy. You know, you're kind of locked into being a good guy during the game. You can't be evil very often, not successfully anyway. Even right, you know, right from the beginning, they kind of force you to be a part of the Minutemen and make, you know, they don't even give you the experience points for the first quest, I don't think, until you agree to be the leader of the Minutemen. It's just sort of left hanging there, and you can come back and get the experience. You know, they kind of force than you to do that. And the fact that you can be an evil raider and f eventually kill Preston Garvey and the stupid Minutemen that have been forcing you to do all these awful radiant quests, that's so satisfying. It also feels a lot better and a lot more meaningful to do these quests to take over the different towns than being one of the Minutemen where you're just sort of like the, the helper boy. And eventually towards the end of Nuka World, you get to a point where the raiders want to uh, restart the power station that's been running Nuka World and get all of the rides and the lights back on. And when you do that and defeat one of the raider gangs that, that's there, and you don't have to side with the raiders, you can just kill all the raiders and do things yourself if you want. But, uh, usually I just let follow the raiders and one of the raider gangs takes over the power plant and you kill them and eventually restart the entire park. Oh my god, is that enjoyable. That is so much fun. I love doing that. And when the park is up and running and everything is... 
you know, the lights are on and you can see the rides moving. It's amazing. I, I also just love the layout of Nuka World a lot better than Far Harbor because that one was, first of all, it was filled with water, which meant you either had to have the Aqua Boy perk or you just couldn't go where the water was or pile on Rad X, which wasn't fun in, in survival mode. Or you couldn't take, and, and even if you did have all those things, you couldn't take power armor there, which wasn't fun. This far harbor was also very much a mountainous map. It was hard to traverse from one side to the other, and because it was covered in fog, I could barely see anything. And it was hard to get from one point to the other in the map. I didn't like that. But in Nuka World, it is beautiful. It's nice and flat. It's not that big that it's overwhelming, and it's fairly easy to traverse, at least when, when in terms of spatial orientation from one area to the other. And once you get into those areas, they can be very confusing and difficult and vertical, and uh, you have to find your way around. But it didn't uh, overwhelm me like uh, Far Harbor did, where I never really was able to orient myself and know exactly where I was with each area. So I think they did a much better job with Nuka World than with this weird, like, irrelevant Lovecraftian appendage that's been kind of stuck on with these creepy, unpleasant synth guys. It also felt not very much related at all. Like, the people in the Commonwealth felt aggressively disinterested in what was going on with Far Harbor. Even if, even if you were the Institute or the Brotherhood or the Railroad, people that were directly involved in the synths and what was going on. You'd think they'd be really interested, but they essentially have nothing to do with it at all. It's not absolutely perfect in Nuka World, but it's only not perfect in sort of like lazy... It's not perfect in that they didn't give you more of it, you know? That, you know, the fact that you couldn't use Sito, which would almost certainly be the best companion that has ever existed in Fallout 4. And they had a lot of good companions, but you could actually have Tarzan come with you. When I was playing as Grognak, you know, I desperately wanted Tarzan to come with me, but there's no way to do it. He's not a companion. He just sort of messes around with you a little bit in the park, and you can't even get one of the gorillas as a companion. Why the heck not? I don't want dog meat following me around. I want a zombie gorilla. Why don't I have a zombie gorilla? What's going on? Why, am, I, am I crazy? Is the whole world gone mad? What's wrong with these people? Why aren't you playing with a zombie gorilla? I'm sorry, but that really irked me that you didn't get that. And maybe I would want the park to be, I mean, you know, I would just want it to be bigger, have more stuff there. Maybe the bloodworms be a little bit more interesting. But, uh, you know, going back to Fallout after being away from it for months and months and months and playing through it again with Nuka World ready to go, that's been so interesting and so fun. And it's really rekindled my interest in the game. Now, Nuka World still has the same problems that the other game did. A lot of the people are not as interesting as perhaps they could be. They don't necessarily have the panache. You know, the leader of the operators is this tough woman gangster, and you kind of get the feeling that she's a little bit trying to be one of the Van Graffs, because she has a brother there that also helps her, just like the Van Graffs, but they don't quite have the charisma that the Van Graffs, I think, did. And unfortunately, the ridiculous Radiant Quest nonsense pops back up. You know, you're not doing set quests for these people. I mean, who... Can we just agree with that right now? Can we get as many voices as, as possibly can? As my voice, everyone's voice, would just come out and say this, so it's just this overwhelming din that, that Bethesda cannot ignore. People don't want radiant quests. We want a limited number of interesting, well-written quests, not an unlimited number of boring, empty fetch quests. I mean, I thought we wouldn't need to actually come out and say that, but we do, I guess. And, you know, that's what we got to do. We got to make sure to let them know that that is happening, that that has to happen in Fallout 5. The more people say it, the more they can ignore it. But I just ignored a lot of those radiant quests. You know, it, it wasn't all that fun. Uh, the, the taking over a different area of the Commonwealth, uh, of the different settlements, that kind of, sort of, has a radiant quest feel to it. But because you actually get to go there and smash up these stupid settlers and mess with them, it, it, it doesn't feel that way. There's just a lot to recommend in this entire DLC. I loved playing it. I loved going through the area. It looks good. It plays great. If you like Fallout 4's gameplay, that is. The characters can be pretty interesting. Some of the quests tend to be on the better side for Fallout 4, which means they're still not really nearly as good as New Vegas. But still, they're, they're up there. They're a lot better. They're some of the best that Fallout 4 has given us. And it just looks and feels 
like Fallout 4. So this, in some ways, I'd have to say redeems the game to some degree in my eyes. It, it makes it much better than I remember it. And, and, and you actually go there at a really low level, which is really fun. I didn't go there at like level 1 like some people I saw did. I went there at like level 15, which was still pretty, which is kind of up there, but still 15 levels short of the recommendation. And it was a lot of fun. I ended up really, really enjoying it, especially at low levels. That was, that, that made it much, much better. So, if you haven't tried Nuka World, I'd say try it. And please tell me in the comments what you thought of Fallout 4, what you thought of the DLC. If you loved it, if you thought my criticisms of the other parts of Fallout 4 were crazy, please tell me why. I want to hear your opinion on that. If you think I was right about Nuka World, please tell me that below. And what you thought of it, if you hated Nuka World, or you disagreed with me on what was going on, you know, tell me in the comments and what you thought could have been better about it. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my content. I'm going to be reviewing more television shows and video games and movies in the future. Please like this video if you liked it. And, uh, yeah, have a great day.